About a year ago, a small group of forward-looking VDubbers resolved to openly pursue their VW goals in support of each other. We each made bold commitments to our projects and targeted the end of the year for completion. We called it VW Run 21, and it lives on the internet as a time capsule showing how this hobby brings us together. A lot of progress was made, friendships were formed, and a few of our group even made it in time. We've all kept going and today, one more of those goals is being attempted. This is the story of Dweezil's drive to the coast. It's time folks. Today we are going to make our attempt to go to the coast in Dweezil and get all the way back home. Starting out, the plan is to do the loop in Daytona. Just wait till you see it, you'll, you'll understand why we're doing it. <laughs> Come down the coast on A1A and then pick one of those access points that there are for the beach. Get Dweezil out onto the sand, take some pictures, enjoy the scenery and the achievement, and then drive on home. The whole thing is about 200 miles. I've been about 50 miles so far in Dweezil, so this is a big, big test. I feel ready. As far as the original plan is concerned, I feel ready. Now, it would be nice to have some other things. <laughs> Windows seals, a new carb on it, a new distributor with a vacuum advance can, a new coil in it, and all these things that are going to happen very soon. But the deal was that we get the car running, we get it safe enough to be drivable, and then take it to the coast. And that's what we're doing today. So. Here we go. <laughs> I'm a little intimidated by it, but I've got all of you with me. And let's let's jump in the car and see if we can make this happen. We're gonna be watching our gauges today. Got plenty of fuel, so we're all set there, but we're gonna watch oil pressure. I have been getting the red light. Now this light, normally would come on at two or three PSI. The cinder that I have in this engine comes on at seven PSI. The oil pressure is not terminal, but it ain't great. So far, temperatures have looked really good. We're gonna watch the cylinder head temp anyway. The highest I've seen is about 360, and we'll probably go a little bit above that today. The vacuum has been looking good as well, particularly once the car is uh, warmed up. So we'll just keep our eye on things, keep our ears open, and take it easy, see if we can make this entire 200 mile loop today. We just did about 12 miles on the highway, and the oil pressure light is on. We're around six or so PSI. There is some oil pressure, this is kind of expected and not great. We just did some hard miles there, but that definitely correlated with an increase in cylinder head temps. The highest that I saw was around 381, which is, that's the point where I think I wanna back things down. I don't ever really wanna make it to 400 degrees there. I'd rather stay below 375, so we're gonna watch that the rest of the day. I'm expecting slower speeds from here on out, uh, and we'll just see how it goes. I think we're in good shape. Let's go down the road. We're about 20 miles into this, and now that we're on the drive, <laughs> it's starting to hit me what a big deal this is. This was 27 years in the making. Bought this car in 1995. It's now February 12th of 2022. Our goal was to try this by the end of 2021. We didn't make that by about a month and a half, but we're doing it today. And just to be able to attempt this is really huge to me. Glad to have all of y'all along with me. We're gonna do everything we can to make it. I think we're positioned well for that, but uh, just to be doing this at all is really cool. Let's enjoy the drive. some fuel. I would imagine the car is running pretty rich. So let's just see how much fuel we've used and what a little bit less than a half a tank really means <laughs> in terms of gallons. 
This will give us a chance to kind of take a look at the car too. Okay, so far so good. I did. Getting close to Daytona. <laughs> I did some quick math and it looks about 20 miles to a gallon. Uh, I've gone about 80 miles and it took just a little over four gallons. That's not going to be the best mileage run. The, the highway miles I would expect would help, but there was a lot of idling and warming up the car and not going very far. So mid 20s would be great. Low 20s would be fine. The big tires don't help, right? That's going to make it harder on the engine to push this thing around. But so far so good so the engine has sat for a few minutes and we're going it's it's heat soaked right so there's parts of the engine that are normally running cool that are warmed up now let's see if it's gonna argue with me about this maybe not <laughs> our cylinder head temps dropped quite a bit over about five minutes with the engine off that's cool vacuum still looks steady oil pressure is not improved very much well, we wouldn't expect that. Got a full tank again. Let's continue. We're headed through Daytona. We're going to drive up by the river and then hit the loop. And then we'll be on A1A. This is going to be cool. This is the beach ramp right here. So if you can believe it, <laughs> they wouldn't let me on because it has to be four wheel drive only. I'm certain that this bug would have been, would have been fine, but that's all right. We're going to go down to another one about three miles down where we don't have that requirement. Uh, we'll try again down there. <laughs> Okay, here's our second attempt. <laughs> We're so close, folks. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. Yeah, if I make it all the way home, it'll be complete. <laughs> hasn't been the prettiest process but we made it <laughs> so I think Dweezil has earned something
Daytona would be complete without a cruise down Main Street. Okay, we've got problems. <laughs> I'm going down the road and it just cuts out. I do have a little can of gasoline. I poured that down the throat of the carburetor and it wanted to run until that gasoline ran out. So I believe we have a fuel pump issue. This is one of those brand new old design, so-called old design fuel pumps. And I've never really liked it because the way that it sits in here and the way the hoses come out of it, and now it looks like it has given up the ghost. I have the bus's crash box with me with all the spare parts and stuff, and there's a fuel pump in there. I'm not gonna really know what the pressure is. I don't have a gauge with me to test that, but all we gotta do is get home now. So I'm gonna swap out this fuel pump here before it gets dark, and we'll see if that does the job for us. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, I think I know what's up. When I pulled this off, there was a suction on my finger, so it was letting air in. That shouldn't happen. There should be fuel coming out of this thing right now. So let's go to the other end of the car. Before I left today, I did a few things, bled the brakes, <laughs> loaded a bunch of supplies in and that kind of thing. But I also changed the gasket on the gas cap, which may be the problem. If this is sealing and not letting air in, then as fuel leaves the gas tank, there's no way that the pump is going to be able to fight the vacuum that forms. So now with the cap off, let's see if we have some fuel coming out of that hose back here. Now we're talking. All right, I've got my eye on this thing. <laughs> but it may not have been the culprit this time. Let's see if it'll pump fuel now that there's no vacuum on the other end. <laughs> I added a button up here for a starter. Now the ignition still has to be on, but it is, and so I can start the engine from back here. I'm going to make sure this is pointing away from me. Yeah, that's a lot healthier than it was a second ago. You know, I heard some backfiring as I was decelerating a little bit earlier today, and that's the first time that I've heard that out of this engine. I wouldn't really expect that from this engine, but a lean condition will cause that, and so that might have been what was going on. Let's test this and see if the engine will run now. This would be a great fix if that's the case. I'm gonna have to fill the bowl with a little bit of fuel here, but it'll get there. do one more fill up here I don't think I'm gonna get much in it the uh, the gauge is reading half of a tank just over half of a tank but this will give us an idea on what kind of mileage we're getting when we're actually driving and not just warming up the car and doing short test runs and stuff so a little bit of a fuel mileage check here better than the last one we did and let's listen for a vacuum here Whoa, I gotta learn how this thing vents because clearly it is not venting. 
I'm not sure if I trust these numbers or not, but we've done 98 miles since the last fill up and we put 3.6 gallons in it just now. That's like 27 miles a gallon, which will be fantastic if that's the case, but we were running pretty lean because of the, the vacuum and the tank issue. So, uh, interesting numbers, definitely on the good side, but not sure I totally trust them yet. What a day. <laughs> we made it. We made it all the way through the loop to the coast, down the beach, and even took the long way home. Had a couple of problems, which I'm kind of happy about, to be honest. It means that we got back running a little bit better than when we left. <laughs> Thanks once again, everybody, for being a part of the project and going along with me today. We made it, and now we're gonna move on to the next thing. See you in the next video.